super excited. I have a really awesome notion to talk to you about today. It is called the Easy Point and Turner. So my friend Sue has reimagined this tool based on um, a tool that came out in the 1970s. She's updated it with um, some great features and it works for tons of different things. So I'm gonna jump over to the side camera and show you exactly how this works. Okay, so here's what the tool looks like. If you'll notice, there is a screw right over here and you can just use your sewing machine screwdriver to either tighten or loosen it depending on what uh, I guess type of resistance you prefer in your tool. I just left mine as is um, as I received it um, but the nice thing about the handles on this tool is that you can grip it a few different ways depending on um, the strength or non-strength of your hand. So you can either hold it like this, you can grab it with two hands like this, you can hold the top even, whatever you prefer. There's a whole different variety of ways that you can hold it. So let me just open it up really quick. Um, this area right here is tapered. And if I hold it sideways, you can probably see there's like a little circular opening right here. So when you close the tool, the tapered end fits inside and it clamps down on your fabric, which is really nice. So I prepared a few bits of fabric so that I could show you several different ways that this tool works. First off, it's great for turning straps. So I went ahead before the show and I prepared some quilting cotton and I attached um, Pellon Shape Flex interfacing and I just sewed the one long edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna go ahead and if you'll notice, I left the strap really long because I wanted to show you in the demonstration that the tool does actually turn um, the long straps well, not just short ones. So first you'll need to go ahead and slide all of your fabric on the tool. Yeah, so I cut my fabric salvage to salvage. So as you can see, it's super, super long. But you can just go ahead and stuff that fabric down on the tool. Okay, so I've reached the end. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull a little fabric out so that I can clamp it on the tool. And you wanna make sure that uh, the metal part of the tool is fitting inside that circle. You don't want it to accidentally kind of push to the side like that. So you wanna make sure the fabric is clamped and the tool is in place. Okay, so now you need to just, to get it going, you just kind of need to wiggle the fabric a little bit. And then once you get it going, it'll just start to push down. <clears throat> but you do wanna make sure that you have your tool tightly clamped, however feels better for your fingers or your hands. Okay, so yeah, I have a long piece of fabric here, as you can see. It's starting to come off this end, and I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this off. And as you can see, I've easily turned that right sides together. And if you're assembling your straps this way, you can either make sure the seam is centered or you can kind of roll that seam outward to have the seam on one side. So there's a few other applications for this, tabs being one of them. So I went ahead and sewed two pieces of fabric with Shape Flex interfacing right sides together using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And this will be a tab for a bag. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead and place that tapered end inside in between the layers, and then I'm just gonna clamp it down um, on one end. And again, you'll kinda need to wiggle the fabric around to get it going, but once you get it going, as you can see, it's turned pretty easily. And then you'll just use a turning tool to poke out those corners. All right, so another method um, that this works for is um, actually applique. So I went ahead and prepared a bit of sheer weight interfacing and sewed it to the right side of my fabric using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and I just left an opening. So I'm just gonna go ahead and insert the tool. I'm clamping it down somewhere on the opposite end. And as you can see, it quickly turns your applique right side facing out. And again, you'll just use a turning tool to poke out the corners. You can also use this tool for poking out the corners as well, because it won't tear through your fabric and, oops, tear through my interfacing, but that's sheer weight interfacing, that's, so that's okay. And you can just go ahead and run it down the curved edge to kind of make a nice neat curve over there. 
Okay, so I went ahead and also prepared some fabric. This is just fabric now, no interfacing, and I used a um, quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'm going to be inserting some elastic. So in the past, I've used a bodkin to do that. I'm going to use the turning tool for both turning the fabric and inserting the elastic. So first, I'm going to turn the fabric by clamping the clamp on the end of the fabric. And again, just sort of giving it a little bit of a wiggle on this end to get the fabric going. There we go. Okay. So as you can see, I've turned that fabric right side out. I'm going to put this tube of fabric back on the tool because I'm going to use it to insert the elastic as well. Okay, so I'm going to push that fabric all the way through and then I've got one inch elastic here. You can use obviously whatever elastic you're using for your project. I'm going to go ahead and clamp that down on the end of the tool. As you can see, it's all clamped. And then make sure you've got it clamped down good. I'm going to pull that fabric over to the other end. Okay, and it, however you feel comfortable, I feel comfortable grabbing the end and pulling it off the tool. I'm actually going to go ahead and clamp this end with a wonder clip just to hold the elastic so that it doesn't fall back through uh, the fabric. And then, as you can see, your elastic is inserted, and that took uh, just a few seconds, really. Okay, so I have one more application to show you today, and that's for inserting either nylon strapping or if you like having foam inserts in your straps to kind of make them padded straps. I've got another piece of fabric, just the fabric, no interfacing. I've stitched that using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'm going to put the tube of fabric back on the tool. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to use the, the foam that I cut for the strap insert. I'm just going to go ahead and pull that fabric so that it's just covering, um, overhanging the clamp, and I'm going to go ahead and clamp that foam insert on there. And this one takes a little bit of extra wiggling, but once you get it, once you get it going, it's pretty quick. I was playing with all of these methods earlier today, and this one took probably the most time. It wasn't super hard, but you just have to get the fabric going, and then, then everything comes into place. Okay, so there you go. As you can see, I've got my fabric moving. I turned the fabric right side out, and it's also attached to the foam interfacing. As you can see, there's my foam sticking out, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that off the tool. I'm going to place a wonder clip over here just to hold that. And then as you can see, as I'm pulling the fabric over the foam, the foam is encased in the fabric and you can decide if you want the seam on one side or the seam centered. And then you'll just give it a nice press just to smooth out all the wrinkles. So again, this is called the Easy Point in Turner. And if you're interested in finding out more information, uh, the link for this tool is in the description. So that was a really cool tool, right? I liked that it had so many different uses for it. Of course, uh, if you're making stuffed animals or other different types of projects, spaghetti straps on a garment. Uh, so it's not just for bag making. Um, I thought it was really cool and great job, Sue, to coming up with uh, something new that I haven't seen before and something really useful.